Jeffrey with Howell's Carpet Cleaning. We're in a rug, rug cleaning station today, and we what we have here is a pretty much 100%, um, well, it's 50% uh, acrylic and 50% polypropylene, so it's 100% um, synthetic plastics. Um, so what we're going to be doing in the cleaning process, we're going to first phase is to go through with our, uh, what's called a rug badger, and what this machine does is that there are straps under this cylindrical machine here and they just kind of beat down on the back of the carpeting and um, create vibration to dump um, trap debris that are sandwiched between the top and bottom surfaces of the, the rug and they fall down into the, the whole system, groove system that's in the, uh, these are actually rubber grease trap mats that you can pick up at uh, Home Depot are probably about 25 bucks a square but they're very heavy duty and you can reuse them over and over and they're about three feet by three feet I have seen some that are uh, little snap grids they're about five bucks a piece but they're only like one foot by one foot so by the time you have enough of them to put together you're uh, spending about the same amount of money and they're plastic so they're not going to be nearly as durable as a uh, um, it, heavy duty uh, rubber grease trap and fatigue matting or whatever these were originally purposed for. I am using them for rug cleaning and they seem to work great. So um, without further ado, let's go ahead and fire this bad boy up and get the first phase out of the way. Alright, so following phase two with that rug badger that we used to beat uh, the debris out of the, the rug, we had it flipped over on the back side and we were beating it through the surface. So um, all the debris that did fall through, fell through. And now what we're going to do is some vigorous uh, vacuuming with the uh, Kirby vacuum cleaner set appropriately. And not enough to like beat the surface of the carpet because I, I want to kind of be gentle on it but at the same time I do want to create a lot of a vacuum airflow and suction to get as much of the uh, debris up off the surface of the carpeting as possible because the more dirt we get up before we do a, a steam cleaning the better because uh, that'll just be less potential mud that's going to be left that could be left in the carpeting um, the idea is that you always get out as much as you possibly can but um, Kind of the, my theory is that the more that you get out, the better before um, you turn it to mud because uh, the odds are more in your favor at that point. So we're going to go through, give us a real good um, vacuum, like I said, and just keep moving on from there. Moving right along to phase three is the application of our pre-spray and um, what I really like using is the truck mounted uh, forums rug smack product. It seems to be very good. It dissolves well. It has a nice scent and it works on practically any, it's safe for practically any fiber type. And because we're more or less working with an acrylic polyester carpeting, we're going to take this and we are going to completely saturate the carpeting and work it in just so that it can go in there and just loosen dirt and emulsify any of the sticky residue or anything that might be in the carpeting in it it'll do a real good job of just loosening all that up so we can go back um, with uh, a further process down the line is with the extraction just to get all that the dirt and debris up and out of the carpeting
All right, so moving on to phase four, which is our agitation process. We have a couple of different options. We've got a nap setter. Um, a lot of guys use a broom. It's called a grindy groom. It basically does the same thing. Um, I, personally, I like the bristles on this better, having a big brush. And basically, after you've generous, generously applied your pre spray on the rug or whatever it is that you're going to be cleaning, you know, you just kind of groom that into the, the fibers there, and that helps to um, emulsify and loosen dirt. It just kind of expedites the chemical process, so it works better and it works faster. So there is a huge uh, improvement for that. The other option, which is what we're going to be using today, is the use of the CRB. And this does mechanical agitation, because what this does is if you look under there we have two counter rotating brushes so those brushes turning i believe that they're about 425 rpm so it does do a lot of agitation there it's going to far out do what we can do with the the broom however you might be wondering or asking yourself in which cases am i going to use the crb or am i just going to use a broom and it really has to do with the fiber type and the, how fragile the, uh, the rug is that we're cleaning. These here, we've already previously established that they are polyester plastics and they're not super fragile. So as far as agitation goes, I know for 100% certainty that the CRB is just going to do absolutely wonderful on them. Um, however, if you're dealing with, let's say, a loose-haired... Uh, wool or something like that where on some short hair wools the CRB is fine but when you start getting like longer hairs you can start getting into some of the tearing and pulling action where you might be uh, losing quite a bit of fibers from the uh, from the rug itself and to prevent that from happening we can control the amount of agitation that we actually provide by using a broom like this so basically doing the same thing except that it is not doing as much agitation so that is the what we're going to be doing now is that we're going to be going over these rugs here which have been had a whole lot of uh, solution already applied to them so the agitation will just help to loosen up and break down any residues that might be in carpeting and get it prepared for a good um, steam cleaning extraction Okay, so now we're moving along to phase five, which is a steam out process. Um, we're using hot water heated up to about 250 degrees and on polyester rugs, um, the hotter the better, just because they, they do uh, tend to attract oils and things that um, seem to react better to heat than cold water. So um, we're gonna go ahead and get things a good rinse. We've got our, uh, the pressure on our truck turned up to about 500 pounds of, of water. Um, wanting to give these things a good rinse along with that mechanical agitation uh, we should be able to get um, very good results as far as just sanitizing, neutralizing, and deodorizing everything. Okay, so after a good thorough extraction the last step that I uh, typically take um, with these particular the fibers on these polyester carpets it isn't so crucial but if you're dealing like with a viscose or other uh, crazy napped um, carpeting when it is wet and it becomes dry however the pattern is that's in the rug is how it's going to be set when it's dried and um, like viscose is very annoying so if you get like a really weird uh, pattern in the carpeting it's not going to come out unless you moisten it back down and get it wet brush it out and then dry it again so 
what we do is we take the uh, brim and we just make sure that we go over and get the uh, padding exactly how we want it set. Regardless of the type of carpet that we're cleaning, we just get in the habit of just doing it because uh, better safe than sorry. Okay, there's something here that I think is worth pointing out. It has to do with the characteristic of polyester and this being a new rug. Um, at least I can explain it and it doesn't sound like I'm backtracking or making anything up. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go over right here. You notice when all of the, uh, see that blockiness down there? We're getting all of the, uh, the fibers in the same direction, so what's causing that blockiness? I'll tell you what's causing that blockiness. It's because the fibers around the, the little patterns that are sewn into the, the carpet there. Uh, camera's kind of glitching out here. But anyways, the uh, fibers around... Dang, I'm gonna have to get a new phone. But anyways, I'll just go ahead and explain that the, uh, the fibers or materials around the little uh, patterns that are sewn into the carpeting are possibly aligned in a slightly different configuration than the other fibers around the rest of the material. Um, so this is really prevalent when you begin to smash and tear and rip and <clears throat> wear the fibers is that <clears throat> this sort of a, a setting becomes more and more uh, visible as carpet matting gets pushed in one direction and pulled in another um, regard depending on you know what angle you're standing at looking at the carpet standing on one side of the carpeting may look completely different than standing on the other side and in some cases it even changes color like it'll go from a dark color to a light color or it might even go from like a light brown looking to more of like a dark purple kind of a look to it um it real, light starts doing really strange and funny things as uh, polyester begins to wear and that's why it is really important to uh go ahead and get them cleaned and serviced um, pretty thoroughly and often just so that that doesn't happen nearly as quickly however it's inedible it's going to happen sooner or later but um the idea is to make your investments last as long as possible after all that's why we uh take our automobiles to the mechanic to have the oil changed is so that we don't destroy our engines and the same is true with our rugs carpeting and full screen all that good stuff is that people just see it as an added expense most people don't see it really as a maintenance process to get as much life and enjoyment out of your investment as possible all right our work here is finished we got these beautiful rugs laying out we got some fans down there to create some airflow, and I'm just gonna leave them here and just let them kind of dry out. Got a nice airflow going, and it's probably about uh, some mid upper 70s, 80 degrees out today. So uh, I'll leave the doors and things open. There shouldn't be any problem with this uh, not drying out beautifully. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave the fans and things on here for a few hours. If they come back in the morning and check them out and see how they're doing, roll them up and deliver them back to the customer.